Hey guys, NJ here. Hope you're all doing great. Today we're having a look at the Happy Model Lava X, um, which is a 100 millimeter, uh, I guess, what class do we call this? Either the toothpick class or the sub micro, I guess, if micros are your kind of standard. 2.5 inch mini quad uh, or little baby quad. These these are the the kind of whoop conversion style uh, quads that are ever so popular at the minute. So this uh, probably geared more towards racing and, and zipping around very fast everywhere. Um, but Happy Model have they, they've brought out some good stuff in the past. Uh, some of which I've reviewed, obviously things like the Mobula and, and various other. Um, quadcopters but this one I thought I would take a look at just because it's good to see more in this class that are small stable fast quiet safer you know they're, they're, they're all good things really but as I said um, on my live stream the other day um, if you didn't catch that I'll just run over some of the things that I mentioned on there uh, this one, uh, when it turned up, was DOA. Um, so, yeah, dead on arrival. My particular problem with this one was I had a bad gyro that was just picking up two axes. Uh, I didn't have any roll axis uh, movement at all, which, of course, I spotted the second I plugged it in. Um, it wouldn't have done much uh, if I went to arm it, and I hadn't already checked that, but, of course, you should always check these things anyway. Um, so I managed to get hold of um, another one of these flight controllers. Uh, the flight controller is the Crazy B F4 Pro version 3, um, which is, uh, this is the FR model, so uh, compatible with uh, FreeSky. Um, and it will take, it will actually take 2 to 4S uh, battery input, but this is only rated for up to 3S, and that's mainly down to the motors being uh, at 7000 kV. If you wanted to run 4S through this, really the kind of max kV you want on the motors is probably, I guess, around 5000 kV. Uh, any higher than that, and you're going to strain them, possibly burn them out on 4S. But uh, I think all these toothpicks should be geared to around 2. 2s and then 3s really is kind of the the super sports mode to run these on i think when you start getting into 4s really you're just talking about um sort of heading up to the proper 2.5 inch micro quads um but anyway i got a replacement of this board and this one turned up and the ant the antenna was fine but the uh i was getting no more than about four meters of range which was uh, obviously incredibly frustrating and disappointing um, so that one had a duff receiver in it. I just a uh, bit of reviewer's curse going on with this one. Anyway, uh, I went ahead and soldered this in um, anyway and decided to fit uh, an XM Plus in there, which is why you can see the routing here and the uh, the two antennas uh, out the, the two corners here, giving me 90 degrees of... Uh, Diversity, um, which is a good thing anyway. It's always the, the XM Plus is such a solid little receiver. Um, obviously, we sacrifice some telemetry, but uh, I'll happily do that to get the range. You can still flash an XM Plus to give you the um, RSSI, so that's no problem. You can have that display in the OSD. So uh, yeah, that's what I did with this one. Now, in terms of what else you get with this guy, there is a Diamond VTX, which is this little half size. Uh, triangle um, VTX that's up in here and I, I actually really like this it's a nice VTX it gives you 25 100 and 200 milliwatts of power um, it uh, connects up to the main board via a, a TX UART line so you can obviously do the Betaflight OSD switching uh, little heads up obviously that's all changing now from Betaflight 4.1 forward would be the thing with the VTX table uh, which I actually have programmed on this it's not as it's not as difficult as you may think you may think this is a whole new pain but uh, we'll, you know we'll get more onto that uh, in another video um, but uh, yeah the Diamond VTX I, I really like the fact that it's got an onboard DVR that's a really nice touch um, Gives you uh, 1280 by 720 resolution, 30 FPS ish, 25 to 30, it's somewhere around there. Um, but it's a nice picture, um, and uh, I think it's a nice little addition. It's worth the extra gram of having that on there on the Diamond VTX, uh, just to have a nice clean video of your of your flights. Uh, the only thing I will say, and I'll put some flight footage in here uh, as we're talking, so you can see. It does occasionally drop frames, uh, and I know people have been complaining about that. It's not 
end of the world does it every 10 seconds but just once in a while you'll you'll notice there'll be the odd drop frame i think some people have been fine not at it at all but i certainly have and i know of others who have um but it's not um flight ruining shall we say there's just the odd clip that you might need to snip out or or uh, do a hard cut if you're putting some footage together it's it's nothing that upset me too much but just be aware that those things uh, have been reported and i have experienced them um, so the VTX is good. The camera is, rather than a generic uh, non-specified camera, this is a Runcam Nano 2 camera. So it's a proper branded Runcam. And for its size, yeah, it's pretty pretty decent. Obviously, it's a small 3rd-inch um, CMOS sensor in there. Very uh, tiny camera. And, you know, it lets in a reasonable, reasonable amount of light. It does a decent job on the DVR picture. And it was perfectly... Um, usable in most light conditions. You'll see um, it struggled a little bit as many of these uh, super tiny low light into the sensor cameras will do um, uh, under certain lighting conditions like uh, sunset or where the sun's very low and you'll see from some of my footage where you do get a little bit of that but on the whole in mo under most lighting conditions um, it was perfectly acceptable and again it's nothing I felt like I had to change out sometimes I do change the camera out if that becomes a problem with me on I've done that with various models in the past but um, it really doesn't bother me I'm, I'm fine with that uh, just the way it is um, further bits and pieces on the flight controller um, you can get this for uh, fly sky ready as well as uh, FR sky ready if you're going to go with the uh, built-in receiver as I said I, I was forced out of the option to use that on, on uh, both occasions in the end um, but you can also get it pre-wired with a, the XM plus in also a um, DSMX for the spectrum guys and also a TBS uh, if you guys want to do uh, uh, want to do the crossfire thing so so that's really cool and it's nice to have the extra range another reason why I wasn't too too upset about putting an XM plus in this you've got a VTX in here that can go up 200 milliwatts therefore you can push the range uh, the standard built built in receiver uh, whether you're using it in D8 or D16 when they're just wired straight off the board down here there's no good routing options for them you could extend it up and out the way but generally speaking your range is limited far shorter than your video is um, so if you you want to make use of the anything over 25 milliwatts then I would suggest going with something like the XM plus or crossfire or whatever it, you want to go with which which offers some form of diversity or decent range uh, be that via long band of crossfire or whatever the crazy bf4 pro that's in here the v3 um, as well as I've talked about the voltage um, it also has an f4 in it which is pretty standard now it's the main uh, CPU that the or M MPU that the beta flight is supporting now and this is on the latest I think it's on RC5 uh, and flying very nicely um, you do have a, a 10 amps uh, uh, well 40 amps 10 amps per ESC uh, built into this board with a burst of 12 amps with each but um, there was no noise in the picture plenty of headroom on the ESCs that all felt uh, really good so no real complaints there either in terms of the um this thing of aesthetics i mean this open frame design i'm i'm of mixed opinion about it i'm not sure i like it that much as opposed to just having the straight arms coming out um i find the straight arms simpler they interf interfere with the, the airflow a lot less um and also I think to be honest with you my, my biggest gripe with this is the thickness of this frame I just think it's ended up making this whole thing a little bit too porky it's a bit too overweight um, and all the signs are there for me of a uh, Pico at this size that is overweight it's it's drawing a little too much the flight times are a little too short um, the power is there these motors are doing a good job and I can see they've dropped you know this KV a lot of these models I've seen with higher KVs than this 7000 KV was probably about right uh, spec for this weight I think it's actually we can do some weights in a minute um, but it just feels to me like the weight is working against it um, and I don't feel that, that these things need to be um, incredibly strong it's better to keep it lighter have low mass 
have low inertia, um, that will protect it from a crash. So keeping it light at this level, I think, does it more favours uh, than trying to beef up the frame. And as I said, things like this, you may end up making an incredibly stiff, thick frame and that will work to the advantage of being strong and, and thick. But when the frame doesn't flex at all and something of this amount of mass, it just won't in a crash, it will just transfer that energy somewhere else and it will take it out on something like the canopy. Um, they do give you two canopies in the box, so that's good. Um, but that's where I think this is going to fall over. I think things are going to start breaking up here uh, far easier. So, you know, it's it's uh, swings and roundabouts, as they say. But if you look at something like the uh, Tiny Hawk, you can see this is this is much more sensible in terms of, of, of frame thickness. I'll try and get these two a little bit closer together where you can see it. It's a bit tricky, but you can hopefully see how much thicker this uh, Lava X frame is where it's uh, really unnecessary. This is stiff. This barely moves. Uh, and it's, you know, it's just got that tiny bit of flex, which is perfect uh, for the weight and inertia. It doesn't need to be any more than that. And I think they've just gone a bit overkill here. I, and as I've uh, mentioned before, I, I just think this frame design, I think, part, I, th I feel like there's something that's causing problems with the tuning. Uh, in the, in the design of this frame, uh, I particularly dislike, and this is where the aesthetic design has come in, and someone in marketing has gone. Let's give it arrowheads; it'll look really cool. And the guy in engineering, who's, who's engineering this whole thing, has probably put his hand on his forehead, going, "Please don't do stupid things like this." But this this arrowhead or fish hook head or whatever you want to call it is just, I mean. This thing's going to get stuck in branches anyway, but but now it's got some extra help to get stuck in branches. I think that's just a terrible idea. Um, there's, these are these are plenty uh, wide enough to protect the motor. Um, if you did get this model, I would suggest getting a Dremel and just getting rid of these. There's there's enough, and it's the same for these holes here. But any any kind of branches or leaves or anything goes through here, and this thing's going to get hooked. I mean, this this quad might as well be a giant ball of uh, spider silk uh, if it goes anywhere near a tree. So. Um, be careful where you fly. Uh, don't fly around trees that you uh, might not be prepared to, to climb to rescue this quad um, because it is going to stick to things pretty easily. Um, so regarding the performance, I thought it was the power was good. It needs a strong battery without a doubt. In fact, the battery that, that kind of worked best for me was this one, this 450 uh, milliamp 75C 3S by Tattoo. Uh, nice, uh, strong, high, high C rating, sustains the voltage well. Um, the interesting thing I found was that this performed better, or the tuning was more stable with this, than the kind of shorter, fatter, flat battery like this, um, where more of the weight is closer to the centre of gravity. This, when this is loaded in, puts more weight across the pitch axis, but that actually gave this a bit of stability. I found this guy to be a little bit, yeah, I wouldn't say unstable, but it was a bit twitchy, a little bit tricky to tune. I, as I said, I can't quite put my finger on it yet, um, and I'm going to keep working on it to try and suss it out, but perhaps something to do with the airflow going around this. Um, I, I was really careful in, re, in when I reassembled this to make sure that everything floated nicely, there's no vibrations, it was all really good it's it's there's there's kind of no uh, no real reason for it to be doing what it's doing but uh, again i'm not the first person to report the the twitchy weirdness that some people are having with this frame i know andy rc when i spoke to him he had some some similar problems with his equally i know a few people have had good experiences with them so i don't know i can't put my finger on it um these this one did come with the HQ props. Now I chose to put on a set of the 2.5 Avon Emacs props because they are just my favourite micro prop, and they always give me good performance across all the quads I try them on. Um, so it was a, a non-variable for me that I knew I could rely on. Um, but I will try this at some point on other props. So um, do I recommend it? Well. I've not had the best experience with this just because I had some DOA components, but you know, that happens to all of us. There are people out there that always get stuff turn up and it's slipped through QC and there's been a problem. So I'm not going to hold that against it. Sometimes that just happens. But now I've got it flying. 
I think it's okay. It's it's fun. I did crash it a few times. It held up. But where I fly, fields, there's mud, there's there's grass. That kind of environment, I haven't really uh, uh, smashed this or, or really put it under any stress. As I said, at least they've put another one in there. Um, the flight control is decent. Good headroom, no noise in the feed from the ESC. So that whole flight control board is really cool. Definitely worth using. I do recommend thinking carefully about your receiver choice and if you want to make use of that 200 milliwatts then get something with diversity or of a decent range that you know will work like the crossfire motor choice is good for this but i do feel like this quad is a little bit overweight and i think that's the biggest problem now what i will be doing with this um, is i have ordered a mode 2 toothpick frame which is lighter slimmer and has a more traditional you know four post uh, design and layout so what I'm going to do is I because I think all these components will actually do really well but to see whether this frame could be could be the problem for me I'm going to swap all this out into that mode 2 frame uh, and see how it does because I like all the electronics I've got here to play with so um, as they all see so all these toothpicks come in this diamond formation thing um, it should just drop straight on um, obviously unplug and replug the motors nice and easy um, so yeah, I'm going to drop that into that frame and do that maybe within the next couple of days. So look for a, a, a rebuild video of this and then we'll go out and see how that does. But um, yeah, you've had some flight footage. There are my thoughts. I think it's it's decent. It's a nice offering, but I do think there's that for me, it's a little porky. You will need a strong battery and there are some design elements of this that uh, I would personally not have, have, have done. So um, if you were to ask me out of this and the uh, Tiny Hawk Freestyle, which one I would have chose, which one I'd choose, or which one would get picked up and put into my bag to go and fly, despite the fact this is 2S, this is 3S, for me personally, every time it's going to be this one. Yes, this is faster. Yes, this has more power, but this flies so damn well and it's so much fun and flies big and, and awesome. So, I mean, for me, it's this one. That's subjective. That's down to you as to what you like. And uh, who knows, once I reframe this, this might become the new favorite. So uh, we'll see. You've uh, hopefully uh, got an idea of where I stand on this one anyway. So that about does it for now. Um, leave me a comment, say hello. It's always good to chat to you. And you know, I read all of your comments and I respond to everyone as best I can. Uh, please don't forget that I have a Discord server and I'll put a link to that in the description. So come along and join in. There's a great community there. A lot of my Patreons are there. We all chat and help out, especially with tech support. And it's somewhere you can get to me pretty easily. Uh, I will have uh, affiliate links for this in the description. If you do want to pick one up, please consider using that. It won't cost you anything but it will give me a little kickback help me run the channel um, and whether you buy this or the tiny hawk or anything if you go via those links it will help me out so thank you very much guys i look forward to catching up with you in the comment section and i'll see you very soon in the next one cheers